Welcome to another episode of Mexican The Kitchen. I'm gonna show you this process really quickly because I've shown it before. Basically I have some water boiling already, it's on a medium fire, maybe a 4 out of 6. And I'm going to just throw in one, one and a half chicken breasts. We're going to boil these with some salt for about 40 to 50 minutes. We want the chicken to still be tender and it will be really easy to shred once it's done. After 40 minutes have passed, we are going to have somewhat of a chicken broth. You can use this to make some soup later. And our chicken is cooked already. We're gonna take it and move it to our chopping board. Once we have our chicken on the chopping board, you know the process. Some people do it by hand. Some people have these cloths you can shred meat and chicken with. I usually use a couple forks and it's very easy. The chicken is really nicely cooked. It just basically falls apart by itself, so we're just helping it a bit. We're going to do this with all of our chicken and reserve it on a bowl or somewhere we, we are going to use it later. Now we have our chicken ready and we have our tortillas. These are corn tortillas, I've shown them before in the channel. They're... okay, tortillas, they're... this El Progreso. They sell them in some of the stores here. If you can get any kind of tortilla, we'll probably do. These are corn. There's only one trick you need to keep in mind when making these kind of tacos because tortillas, when they're cold, they're kind of crumbly so they will break if you try to roll them up so for that reason I have a pan in medium fire, also like 3 or 4 out of 6 we're going to put the tortilla there for a few seconds uh, then we're gonna flip, heat it up for a few seconds and this will make our tortilla soft and it will be really easy for us to make our tacos now that we have our tortilla, I'm going to take it to a flat surface, I'm using my chopping board. I'm going to take some of that shredded chicken, I'm going to put it inside, just move it to one of the sides, and then we can just roll our taco. Try to make it tight, try to make it kind of the same size for every taco. And what we are going to do to prevent it from open is take a toothpick, we're going to put it down and up again from the same size. This will make it very easy to fry and just roll it on the oil without it going or getting stuck. Now we have our first taco, it looks beautiful. We're going to repeat the process. This is the result and at this point you can put this on the fridge, you can freeze them, you can do whatever you want and they will be fine because we're going to deep fry it. So if you make these a couple days or one day before you're going to use them, this is the moment to store them. Now we're ready to cook our tacos. If you have a deep fryer, that would be really nice. I don't have one, so I just have a pan with some canola oil. It's warmed up. It's again on a medium fire, three or four out of six. We don't want to keep this too hot, because if not, our oil will get burned. It will get bitter, and we won't be able to reuse it for the tacos. Like Basically, it will get ruined very quick. So just keep it on a medium fire, it will keep a constant temperature and it won't get ruined, you will probably be able to fry all your tacos with the same. So just drop them in there, keep an eye on them. You will notice that the color starts changing, just keep rolling them, checking on them, try to make them look as even as possible. As you can see, our tacos are carrying this really really nice brown golden color. Don't worry if they feel a bit soft, because sometimes they feel a bit soft when you just took them from oil, but when you give them a few minutes outside, then they will become this like really crunchy taco. So give it some time, don't worry about it. We're taking our tacos out, and some people like to put them on some paper towels for it to absorb the oil, but I think it's way easier to just grab a strainer, put them in there, all the excess oil will just drop. I'm preparing the rest of the ingredients we need for our tacos. I have this salad cheese, it's kind of feta, it crumbles. It's not what we use, but it's very similar. I'm going to use some chopped onions, some chopped lettuce. And we have rested our tacos for about 10 minutes, so they drop the excess oil. You can see it here, it's beautiful, really nice color, really crunchy. We can take the toothpick off and we'll put them into our plate. You, you can usually get plates uh, on the street where you buy this of maybe from two to 
four or five tacos depending on the size. I think with this size I will serve three. Now that we've set our tacos, we are going to add some creme fraiche. This creme fraiche is a bit more liquid because what I do is I open it, I add a dash of milk and mix it really well. So it's a bit more runny, very close to what we usually use in Mexico. You don't need to, but I think it makes it more authentic. We're going to sprinkle some of this onion on top of our tacos. Next, we will sprinkle some of this cheese. It's salad cheese, just crumbles, very close to cotija, not quite the same, but it still works. This is optional. If you have guacamole, you can use a bit of guacamole. If you have some avocado, you can just cut some slices, put them on top. One of the really important things for Mexican cuisine is the sauce. And I had this chipotle ready-made sauce, which is quite nice. It goes really nice with this. But if you prefer some homemade sauce, you can check some of my other videos, make some hot sauce and use that for your dish. And we are at the end going to top everything with some shredded lettuce. It's really nice. This dish will be extremely messy. You usually can give someone a fork with it and it doesn't matter. Usually Mexican cuisine is really messy, especially if it's this street food, this really nice food. It's perfectly normal, just enjoy it. As you can see, this is the end result. Many of these dishes have these elements of the green, white, red, kind of like the flag. It's really delicious, very traditional. Most people will love this, the crunchiness is great. You will definitely love this combination of flavors. This is how I make these tacos dorados. This is something very traditional, especially on Independence Day. Uh, a lot of people make pozole, this soup with corn, pork. And this is one of the dishes that you will find everywhere. You will find a lot of places selling it on the street. It's very cheap because people get to use, maybe if the tortillas are a couple days old, they're not as fresh, not as soft, then they can use it in this and you won't notice. As I mentioned, these tortillas I buy, I wouldn't use them for tacos. They're not really great. Uh, they're kind of like crumbly. Uh, when you try to cook with them and make a, a, a soft taco, they break a lot. But when you put them in the oven or you fry them, they're really good, really nice. So you could use this kind of preparation, like these uh, tacos dorados. You could stuff them with cheese, with uh, potato, like mashed potatoes kind of thing, uh, potatoes with chorizo cooked. You can use some tinga, you can basically stuff this with whatever you want, with some uh, beef. And it's a really easy dish. It might take a while when you're f uh, frying them, but it's really easy to make them. They're really good, really tasty. This is something that, for example, kids love. And I think you should try them. Uh, if you like the video, press like, subscribe, all those. And I'll see you in the next one.